And back to Elsa now in the early season storm battering the east tonight. Is this type of storm the new normal? And what can communities do to make their coastline more resilient as climate change is altering the hurricane season that so many have gotten used to? Chief Meteorologist Ginger Z has this week's It's Not Too Late. Hi, I'm Ginger Z, and it's not too late. Welcome to the Rockaways here in New York. So I'm on a different beach, the surf kicking up. It's a different morning, but I'm still talking about the same tropical storm. You know, I started this week covering tropical storm Elsa in Florida. That Gulf of Mexico does not usually look like that. It is known for being peaceful, but not this morning as the water still behind the storm is pushing into these channels and bays, squeezing together. We still have a considerable chance at some flooding. Elsa, not a remarkable storm because it's epic or will be historic by any means, but because it started so early. Elsa is the fifth named tropical storm of the season. It's the earliest we've ever done that since we started naming storms back in the 1960s. So that makes it different. But the other thing that makes it different was its proximity to Tampa. Tampa hasn't had a direct hit in more than a century. Thankfully, they didn't get it again. But even when a storm parallels them, they can see major flooding. And ABC's meteorologist Ginger Z starts us off from the floodwaters of Florida. Good evening, Ginger. George, it has been a non-stop rain for hours. Look at people with boats abandoning their cars and now even their homes. The bad news is Debbie isn't done. That was Tropical Storm Debbie in 2012. And then last year, there was Ada. I've never seen this. Never, not this deep, period. Elsa's path was eerily close, but a good reminder that the luck can't last forever in Tampa. Tampa Bay is incredibly low lying, um, and we have a lot of real estate that's been uh, developed right here along our coast. And so we're incredibly vulnerable to even small amounts of storm surge like that three to five feet. And then on top of that, sea level rise. I saw a report in 2013 that said Tampa is one of the top uh, susceptible to flooding in the globe. Yeah, and that, that a lot of that comes from the fact that we put our homes and our businesses really close to beautiful Tampa Bay. It's so great. This is what we want to enjoy while we're here. And um, unfortunately, that means sometimes we're at risk for flooding. That means during hurricanes and in the future, that means things like sea level rise and sunny day flooding can affect our properties as well. While I was in Florida, I talked with Maya Burke. She is the assistant director of the Tampa Bay Estuary Program. See, they're a group that are planting habitats along the Tampa coast to help protect everybody from storms when they happen. There are things that we can do in this area that can help protect our, our community from future sea level change. One of the things that we believe in here in Tampa Bay is that green infrastructure is a really important tool. So it's not just about pipes and pumps and getting the water out as fast as we can, but we want to plant habitats that can protect the coast from wave action and things like that but also coastal habitats are really excellent at storing carbon and mitigating the effects of climate change so planting this beach area with marsh grasses with mangroves with oysters with sea grasses that all stores carbon in the environment and if we can protect it then it stays there back here in new york we are still tracking elsa and if you remember from our oyster feature New York has implemented a similar approach. They're restoring and replanting oysters in the Hudson. New York Harbor used to be one of the great ecological treasures of the world. Mm. And we destroyed that by harvesting all the oyster reefs. And we think that by restoring oyster reefs to the harbor, we can restore that lost habitat. Using nature's engineers to help protect the city from storms. So the surfers trying to get a little bit in with that high surf kicking up, but you will not want to be out here Friday morning through Friday night into New England. The tropical storm warnings go all the way up through Boston. And yes, this is early for us to be this deep into the season, but it is never too late for us to talk about protecting ourselves, learn about how we can adapt, and talk about how we can deal with these extremes going forward. I'm Ginger Z, and I promise it's not too late. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.